All right, welcome, and let's continue our conversation about Stoicism. And we were going over the moral letters by Lucius Aeneas Seneca. We've ended up in letter 67, which is too long to read in its entirety, but I will read the first part, and then I'll go through some other parts. Let me begin with common places. Spring has begun to open out, but although it is tending already towards summer, with hot weather overdue, it has kept rather cool and the weather is still unreliable. Often enough, it lapses back into winter. Would you like to know how doubtful it still is? I don't yet trust myself to a bath that is actually cold. I still take the edge off of it. That means enduring neither heat nor cold, you say. Quite true, dear Lucilius. My time of life is satisfied with its own chill. Even in midsummer I can hardly get warm and rarely do I shed a garment. I'm grateful to old age for keeping me to my bed, and why not be grateful on that account? Things that I ought not to have wanted to do, I now cannot do. My most abundant conversation is with books. Every time a letter arrives from you, it seems to me that I am with you. I feel as though I were actually answering you and not just writing back. So let's take up the subject you are asking about and scrutinize its nature as we would in conversation. I read you those those first two paragraphs because I think it's a very nice image. The the it's slowly uh, getting to spring, but you know it's still still a bit cool. We we I think we we can relate to that, right? Like we we know what seasons like that can be like. Okay, now here are things I think get very interesting and really touch upon something that is incredibly central to Stoicism. You ask whether every good is desirable. If it is a good to behave courageously while being tortured, bravely while being burned, patiently while ill, it follows that these things are desirable, but I do not see how any of them merits our wishes. Certainly I do not know of anyone who, whose wishes were fulfilled when he was cut by the lash, or twisted up by arthritis, or stretched on the rack. This was a quote, so I'm assuming that Seneca was quoting Lucilius's letter here. Make a distinction, dear Lucilius, and you will realize that there is something choice-worthy in these things. I would prefer to remain untouched by torture, but if I should ever have to endure it, I will wish to conduct myself courageously, honorably, boldly in that situation. I prefer, and why not, that no war should come my way, but if it does, I will wish to endure with dignity the wounds, the hunger, and anything else that wars necessarily bring with them. I don't want to be ill, I'm not crazy, but if I should ever have to be ill, I will wish my behavior to be neither intemperate nor unmanly. So it's not the discomforts that are desirable, but the virtue with which you bear those discomforts. Okay. Um, I'll do I'll do one more paragraph and then I'll talk a bit about it. Some adherents of our school hold that the courageous endurance of all such things, while not to be shunned entirely, is nonetheless not desirable because wishful pursuit should be directed toward what is thoroughly good, tranquil, and set beyond all annoyance. I disagree. Why? First, because it is impossible for anything to be good without being desirable. Second, if virtue is desirable, then there is no good without virtue, then every good is desirable. Third, even if torture itself is not desirable, the courageous endurance of torture is desirable. This really is a very central aspect of Stoicism, because this gets into the territory of you cannot necessarily control what happens to you, but you can control how you react to those things as they get to you, as they happen to you. And that is not always easy. I will give you an example, a historical example, of a case where that was absolutely not easy. Now, the letter goes on for about two and a half more, well, a little under two and a half more pages. But here are a couple of things that I have found very interesting in what Seneca is writing. Make the distinction, as I said, and there will be nothing to lead you astray, for it is not suffering torture that is desirable, but suffering it courageously. That is what I want, to act courageously, and that is virtue. But who has ever wanted that for himself? Quote, 
Some wishes are openly expressed in that they concern particular items. Some are latent in that many things are included in a single wish. For instance, I choose an honorable life for myself, but an honorable life consists in a variety of honorable actions. I skip a little bit. When a person endures torture courageously, he employs all the virtues. Perhaps one of them is out front and most in evidence, namely patience. Still, courage is there, which is the basis of patience and perseverance and endurance. Intelligence is there, without which no plan is put into action, and which urges you, when you cannot escape something, to bear it as bravely as you can. Constancy is there, which cannot be dislodged from its post, which never lets go of its purpose, whatever force be applied. The whole indivisible assembly of the virtues is there. Whatever is honorably done is done by a single virtue, but in accordance with the counsels of the assemblage. But whatever is approved by all the virtues, even if it appears to be done by a single virtue, is desirable. That really emphasizes the point of the most important aspect is virtue, right? To, to Stoics, Stoic ethics being a type of virtue ethics, the most important thing is virtue. Do the right thing with wisdom and courage and temperance and the fourth one that I don't remember, wisdom and courage and justice. And then you are, you are being virtuous and that is the most important thing because if you are being virtuous, if you are doing the right thing every time, how could you really be unhappy? You're doing the right thing every time, right? Okay, I continue, I skip a bit. At this point, our own Demetrius comes to mind. He who calls the life free of care, without any assaults of fortune, a dead sea. To lie in undisturbed calm, with nothing to rouse yourself toward, nothing to strive after, nothing to denounce or contend against, testing the firmness of your mind, that is not tranquility. It is enfeeblement. Attalus the Stoic used to say... I would rather have fortune keep me in its encampments than in luxury. I am tortured, but courageously, it is well. I am slain, but courageously, it is well. Listen to Epicurus, he will say also, it is pleasant. I, however, will never call such a stern and honorable deed by so soft a name. And here, I think he sums this up beautifully. This is the, the very eloquent Seneca that we love, because this really sums up Stoicism in a single line, really. I am burned, but undefeated. Why should this not be desirable? Not because the fire burns me, but because it does not defeat me. Nothing is more excellent than virtue, nothing more beautiful. Whatever is done at its command is not only good, but desirable as well. Okay. F forgive the, the many passages I read, but I, I think they all raise the same point. The most important thing in life is virtue, doing the right thing. And by doing the right thing, how could you not be happy? You are doing the right thing. You're doing what you know is right. But this last sentence, I think, really is beautiful. I am burned, but undefeated. Why should this not be desirable? Not because the fire burns me, but because it does not defeat me. We go through things in life that are unpleasant, sometimes very unpleasant. Sometimes, let's be frank, lethally unpleasant. You, you, you can become terminally ill. There can be all kinds of things that happen in your life that are detrimental or that are extremely detrimental or that may even lead to the end of your life. And Stoicism does not deny that. Stoicism also does not claim what people often seem to think, that then you just switch off all emotions and you don't feel anymore. That's not a Stoic who, who would actually recommend that. If you read the ancient Stoics, none of them say, well, just be emotionless. What they do say is, but you can choose whether or not you are perturbed by what is happening to you. And you can choose at any time to not be perturbed. You can choose to not let something affect you. You can choose to bear something as courageously as you can. That doesn't mean you do not still suffer, but your suffering is mitigated a bit by you choosing how to handle that situation. Now, this is not always easy. And I, I think the, the best example... <clears throat> 
uh, is from uh, is, is is quoted in the lives of eminent philosophers, which is an interesting book uh, written by Diogenes Laertius, and I have I have quoted from that before, but it's 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 been a while that I did. So Diogenes Laertius uh, wrote sort of like a who's who of ancient philosophy back in the day. And he describes all the schools of, of philosophy. There's Epicureanism, and these are the main players, and this is what they their theories are, and this is Stoicism, and these were the main players. It's a very interesting book from, from that period to read, right? And he describes Stoicism, uh, obviously because it was an important school of philosophy at that time, and he mentions the story that I've always found remarkable of Dionysius the Renegade. And not only is that an amazing nickname, but, but he got that nickname for a very specific reason, which is actually quite tragic. He gave up Stoicism. And that, I think, is a very important thing to realize. It's, it's easy to, to, to sit here and say, well, you know, you should just bear pain. It's okay, you should, just, you should just bear it. Virtue is the most important thing. And Dionysius the Renegade, he believed that. He, he believed that he was a Stoic. He was one of the disciples of Zeno of Citium, the founder of Stoicism. And everything was going so well until he got a very bad eye disease, eye infection. I, I don't think it's fully specified what he had, but what we do know is that he was in terrible pain. He was in terrible, terrible pain because of his eye. It, it hurt tremendously. Now, the Stoics, the Stoics say... Well, virtue is the most important thing. So pain would be a dispreferred indifferent. It's indifferent to virtue. It's not bad or good. It, it's just something that all else being equal, you would rather not experience, a dispreferred indifferent. And you can still choose to act virtuously in the face of a dispreferred indifferent like pain. And, and Dionysius the Renegade basically said, yeah, screw that. Uh, because that's not how it works. I'm in so much pain, I cannot just bear it. I can no longer say virtue is the most important thing. It doesn't matter what else happens. Pain doesn't matter. It's just a dispreferred indifferent. It simply doesn't work that way. And he went to another school of philosophy. So in other words, he left the school of the Stoics. I use school here in the, in the sort of figurative sense. Not, not a building, but just he left that school of thought. And he moved to the Cyrenaics. And the Cyrenaics uh, were kind of a, a precursor to the Epicureans. And the Cyrenaics said, no, no, actually, virtue is not the most important thing. The most important thing is hedonism and avoidance of pain. Uh, so if, if you know a little bit about Epicureanism, that's, that's really close to Epicureanism. That's how that sort of morphed into Epicureanism. And, and, and I think... I don't think Diogenes describes uh, that, but I think Dionysius the Renegade was happy there because he said, no, yeah, that's what it's like. Hedonism is most important. The, the, the avoidance of pain is most important, not the avoidance of... Sorry, not the, the, the striving for virtue. It's the, th that hedonism, that's what's actually most important. And I think it's a very characteristic example, right? <clears throat> Because, again, it's very easy to say, oh, you know, bad things happen. You just bear them and you take it. And it's, But it's not necessarily that easy once it actually happens. And I think that it is in those moments where it's actually very difficult to bear whatever is happening to you in life that Stoicism can be very helpful. Because it can help you to try and take a step back mentally, think about what's going on, Think about what you experience and feel, and then choose what you wish to do, how you wish to approach that situation. And many of us, I think, know stories of people who've been in a lot of pain for whatever reason, who've gone through diseases, and who have borne it with a lot of dignity. And I'm not saying that that's the easy thing to do. That is an incredibly hard thing to do, I would imagine. But that's where Stoicism, I think, can come in and be very useful. But if not, then that's also acceptable, but then then, then you would become like Dionysius the Renegade, and then you look for comfort elsewhere, which can also help. There you have it. This was 
letter 67. I hope this was useful. Let me know what you think. Let me know what you think about Dionysius the Renegade and his thinking and how you would approach a situation like this. I will gladly see you next time. More talk about Stoicism. Bye!